Well, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to our session on Get Off Your Agile Treadmill and Build a Community Instead. Um, we're very pleased to have this opportunity to present our Drupal journey. The session can only be recorded if you speak quite into the microphone. Oh, okay. Okay, is that better? We'll have No, we'll just dance yeah, about it. Yeah, we'll dance about it, yeah. We'll just dance. Okay, so our agenda today is uh, we're going to cover our Drupal journey there at the University of Edinburgh, uh, what we've done to build a community, and um, what we've learned along the way. Session should run for about, or the presentation for about half an hour, and there'll be plenty of time for questions at the end. So I'll just introduce my co-speaker, Bruce Darby. He's the product owner of the university's content management system, based obviously on Drupal. Uh, Bruce joined the university 14 years ago. Previously in the university, he's worked as technology support for disabled students. And Bruce is a keen online chess player and welcomes challenges under the player name Brewster underscore D on chess.com. Yes, hi, and I'd like to introduce uh, Tim Gray. Uh, joined the University of Edinburgh uh, in 2008 as our senior project and program manager. And uh, previously to that, he worked uh, at Volkswagen for 10 years, and he's an occasional but very, very good photographer. Thanks. So we're going to start off with uh, some information about the university, and we thought it would be different to play a round of university bingo. So there are uh, some numbers up here. I would like somebody to call out a number, and then I'll tell you what the number stands for. And there are also some prizes. So first person, please. 390 is the number of websites we migrated uh, from the proprietary system to Drupal uh, in 2014-15. <laughs> 30,000 is the number of students enrolled at the university, beginning of last year. <laughs> Next one. Sorry? 1996, um, Dolly the Sheep was cloned at the Rosalind Institute. <laughs> and, and one more. No, take the one in the middle. <laughs> 2015, that was the year we launched uh, our Drupal-based CMS, uh, which we called EdWeb. Oh, and I should have done that. Okay, <laughs> okay so uh, going right back to the very beginning, uh, we wanted or we needed to build a new content management system for the university. Um, and, uh, and we put in an, a, a whole load of other technical solutions in at, at the same time. So we built this new content management system uh, uh, centrally for the university. Uh, and we also had a Drupal distribution that we encouraged people to take and, and use as well. And right back in our business case, um, we said we wanted to build a culture of innovation, uh, of collaboration, uh, creative problem solving, and problem transfer, uh, and problem building. So we were really starting to lay the foundation right from this, uh, right from this very beginning uh, to, what, to build what we hoped would be a strong and, and vibrant community. So I'll take you a little bit through the journey that we went to get to where we are today. Back in 2012, we had an initial look at Drupal. Uh, there was a desktop evaluation that produced a small report and said, yeah, Drupal's something you can look at a little bit closer. So we then went on at the end of 2012 to have a proof of concept project. We took 11 key requirements and analyzed these a little bit closer to come to the conclusion, would we be able to meet these requirements with Drupal, yes or no? The answer was all yes, so we decided to progress this. And in 2013, we had three other projects running simultaneously. One was on training, that was Drupal, as well as Agile training, technical investigation, where we looked at the architecture, and the other one started to look at requirements gathering. July 2013, we started on our CMS development. We used Agile for this, and we'll talk a lot about that later. Um, the end of 2014, we released our minimal viable product, um, went on to release another four releases in total, and then on 2015, we launched the, uh, the full client, and also by that point had migrated all the uh, 390 sites from the previous system over to, to Drupal. 
We've then went on with two projects, each lasting a year, one with additional requirements, putting extra features into the system. And last year, we started on a collaboration pilot uh, with some additional feature development. This year, we're looking at Drupal implementation planning, and that's why we're one of the reasons why there's a group of colleagues here at uh, DrupalCon this year. And next year, then, we're going to move and over to uh, Drupal 8. Okay, so as you could see, we had plenty of time to get things right, uh, and we got onto our agile machine uh, in our streamlined position, and we shot off uh, pedaling furiously downhill. Um, and yeah, we, we, we built a team that was efficient, uh, it was productive, it was disciplined. I mean, this is what Agile is really, really good at. It, 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 there's lots in there that can really help you to do this. Um, and on top of this, we built processes that were strong, uh, that were consistent, uh, and we had plenty of time to practice them. Uh, so with all this, the combination of, of, of this with our team uh, and with our processes, we got lots and lots of work done. So when we started on this journey, I remember the first meeting where we were talking about the development and how we were going to plan the project. And we were all um, very clear at the start that with Waterfall, this just is not going to work. It's too, too uh, big a piece of work and it's going to take too, too long. So this slide here represents some of the things which were important to us. The university uh, has quite a mature project management culture, but we hadn't in, uh, embarked on agile projects of that scale at that time. We had done some uh, agile uh, projects, but more smaller, maybe three, four uh, iterations and not uh, certainly as many as we would need. So a few of the things uh, that we, we needed, uh, we needed team building, we had structured meetings or stand-ups, roles and responsibilities were key. The university is quite, uh, uh, quite a diverse place. There's lots of different campuses and teams located in different places. So co-location was a key thing. We managed to get some rooms where for the duration of the iteration, everybody came together. Um, we, we were agile in applying agile. And we'll come on to talk about that more uh, a little bit later. And right in the center there, one of the most important points of the, uh, of the, uh, the project, chocolate cake. We wouldn't have got through a lot of deployments without that. <laughs> so the agile approach was really to break down the user stories and the iterations into manageable chunks. We went with um, a nine-day development iteration because people working in the project had other responsibilities. We had three days a week the team came together for three weeks. So Tuesday to Thursday every week, uh, we worked on the, on the project together. Um, the release cycles towards the end of the project, so from two to five, we had um, three development iterations and a one non-development iteration within each release cycle. We had the flexibility there to move the non-development iteration uh, to places where it worked for us, depending on the user stories or people's availability, obviously, with annual leave and stuff like that, without having to move the release dates. That flexibility was, was very good. And we decided early on not to break the people. Uh, and uh, we did a lot of team building activities with that, which possibly wasn't so common in the university. We celebrated our success. So at the end of every iteration, we made sure everybody had for a drink or a coffee. Um, when we released uh, one, of, one of the, the releases, then we did something bigger. We uh, activity or went to for a meal or something like that. And that was uh, very important to uh, get everybody bought into the, 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 the new way of working with Agile and the team as well. A little bit about project governance, very busy slide. The key points are the four tiers there. So the top tier, we had our, uh, our senior management. We have a QA process uh, within the university. We had a project board. The blue layer is the main project team. Um, so the roles and the, uh, for all these people, we did change them along the way, uh, and we'll come on to that uh, later as well. We had an extended iteration team. People who needed to be involved at certain points in the project, but not involved in the core iteration. And then we had an extended layer with uh, other stakeholders and um, other people around the university who needed to be kept informed of what we were doing. You know, so what's wrong? What's the problem here? We're just saying that we've 
created a really good team, really good processes, we're working really well, we're getting loads and loads of work done. But on a big project, um, you know, you can start to get stuck in a bit of a rut and you just tweak things really, you don't really make any radical changes and you plow in straight uh, ahead. And I think this can lead to a bit of a flatness uh, within the team, a lack of vibrancy. Uh, it's not really burnout, uh, as we already said, and I think a lot of teams do this. They, they, there is a lot in place. Uh, you stop your team from burning out, you eat pizza, you drink uh, beer. Um, but yeah, this lack of sort of vibrancy, uh, because we've just been going uh, through these iterations over and over again, and we're in this rut, and I think you can start to sort of lose sight, really, of, of the bigger picture. Um, text is a bit small, apologies uh, for that. Um, so yeah, two squirrels, one is storing uh, his nuts for winter, and the other is coming in with uh, a nutcracker, and one is saying to the other, Andrew, what's that? Just bring us stuff we can eat, fool. And it's this thing about you're starting to lose sight of the bigger picture, so you, you are going through the agile process, uh, really, really good, and you are releasing small pieces of discrete functionality which you're deploying and they're going live and everything's great, but you don't have any time to step back and, and think about what your product uh, vision is um, and where you're going with it. So yeah, just losing sight of that bigger picture. And this has led to some people saying we should kill Agile off uh, completely. So this is a, a, an article from Nate Walkinshaw on a really good uh, sort of blog re review channel called Mind the Product. Uh, if you're not familiar with that, I'd definitely say uh, take a lot, look at that, especially if you're into project management or product management in particular. So he was saying, uh, you know, Agile died while you were doing your stand-up. Um, and, you know, basically his point was that the teams he, he said that he'd, he was involved with, that he was working with, um, had stopped sort of involving the user or the customer in their process at all. And the ones that were doing it were in a silo or, or in a team on their own. And they, they'd stopped really sort of involving their, their users in the process. And again, saying that they were focused on the output and really focused on the agile process. So it was all becoming about stand-ups. It was all becoming about JIRA uh, and the process itself rather than what you were, were actually producing. And so it led me to start thinking about what, what we could do here. And um, yeah, really, thinking, you know, is there a compromise here? Um, I love my project management methodologies and I love Agile in particular, so I don't want to kill this off. I definitely don't want to do that. But I was thinking, you know, could we stop the treadmill just for a bit and just get off? Um, and so don't leave all everything that you've learned behind. We, we've just said that we've learned some great stuff through this whole Agile process. All the team building, all the building of processes, so let's not leave all that behind. You know, could we take this and use it in a different way, something that's constructive and something that we could do together as, as a team, as a, as a whole team together? Um, and so could we build a community instead? And the answer to that was quite simply yes, because the university is quite a devolved organisation, as I said before, and it has lots of communities already. And the university website program, Bruce's area, they already ran several different types of community events. We had community events for uh, web publishers. We have more technical community events um, aimed at various groups around the university. These sessions which were set up with these different groups, they always had a focus and agenda, certain themes that were covered, for example, the latest developments with uh, the CMS, um, and they also allowed adequate time for Q&A afterwards, uh, so the, the discussion uh, was, was motivated and, and, and people be, were talking about the, the various uh, topics. And also, more, most importantly, the people who attended these sessions, they were the users. They were either the web publishers or the people that were building sites. Yeah, and that's, um, I said in this, the, 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 the sort of blurb about what we were going to do here, I wanted to point out some pitfalls along the way. And, 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 and I know some of these are going to sound pretty obvious, but I think we've all been to stuff like this where people have got it wrong. And so I think it is just worth pointing out that community building is not about sales. And it's not about marketing, although, of course, they have those places. But don't get confused with that as being part of your, or, or your building a community. 
Um, and I'm sure you've all been to this sort of thing before where they have got it wrong and it's all a bit sleazy and creepy and, and, and they're saying come along uh, because we love you um, and then actually they're saying sign here and, and, and we'll give you this contract. Uh, so yeah, community building is definitely not about that. And that's definitely not us, just to be clear. So what do we get out of it as the, uh, the service owners, the people that run the projects and the programme? We get feedback and we get suggestions. The community is not backward in coming forward. They let us know what they think. Um, they're the positive things, the, the pain points. Um, it gives people the opportunity to uh, collaborate with us uh, and also to, to contribute. Yes, and, and while we want everything to be uh, on an equal level, um, you know, sometimes it is us doing some of the organisation and we're coming and we're, we're saying this is what the focus is going to be. Um, and so we are sharing our information and, and expertise. We, we are doing that to, 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 uh, to give a focus to some of the events that we do. But what we want is for the fact that we, the people that are turning up, they are our users, and we want them to be able to tell us what they want uh, and not to look at our software and think, well, that's it. Uh, I have no say in this. I'm just going to have to put up uh, with it. So, yeah, we definitely want to foster this feeling of collaboration and then being able to contribute stuff uh, to us. So we have these small communities that in one way or another are kind of working together. We thought, well, let's look a little bit further afield. Let's learn from existing communities. And at the outset of this piece of work, uh, a small team went to uh, DrupalCon in Prague. And uh, we've been to subsequent DrupalCon since. And we thought, well, let's look at these communities. What do these guys do in Drupal, Drupal Camp Scotland? We went to, uh, hosted uh, that once as, as well. Um, what makes that work so well? What can we learn from that? Can we tap into any of these ideas? Uh, could we borrow ideas from the open source uh, model? Um, so we did that and we picked up some ideas and we progressed that. Yeah, and so we started to have this idea about putting together our own uh, university community code sprint. Um, you know, two reasons, really. One is, as I said at the beginning, uh, we had produced this content management system, this central content management system, but we also had put in a whole host of other technical solutions uh, as well, one of them being this uh, Drupal distribution that we wanted people to take for in, in our community, in our university community, and customize and, and use and build um, and, and, and use this as, the, as their own live server if they didn't want to come into the central system. But we found that, you know, we were very, very busy. As I said, we were on our agile machine and we were pedaling fast downhill and we didn't really have time to support them in this community endeavor. And we really needed a way to kick this whole thing off again. So we, we had some great ideas and we just wanted to, to see if we could kick this whole process off again. I mean, secondly, yeah, we, we always look into continuously improve our community events as well in the same way that we do with our software. And so we are wanting to push the boundaries a bit sometimes and take a few risks. And, and, and that's what we wanted to do with this uh, community code sprint. So some of our developers had come to DrupalCon and, uh, you know, some years ago and they'd come back and they were enthusing and talking about going to this, into the code sprint uh, at DrupalCon. And we were just like immediately struck by how uh, powerful an approach that was. And we thought, you know, couldn't we do this? Could we have a day where we invite developers from around the university to come and work on our content management system uh, and, and live and breathe our code? And it, it, it was risky and it was quite scary. Uh, but yeah, we, we wanted to push uh, ahead and see if we, if we could actually go ahead and, and do this. And now down the line, uh, we have had three code sprints. Our fourth is now planned. Um, each time, 12 to 15 people have, have turned up. And um, we have uh, worked on and solved 25 or more issues, which are, are now deployed and, and, and live. Uh, so yeah, everything working very, very well. This is a photo from our third code sprint. Um, uh, it's a photo that I really, really like. Um, one of the reasons is that you can see people actually sitting and talking to each other. And yes, there are times when it's heads down and, and everyone's tapping away and coding. But at this point, yeah, people are collaborating and they're talking to, to each other. And it's really, really nice. I mean, I remember the first code sprint that we had. And um, I was just like absolutely terrified of going along that day. Um, 
and I didn't know if it was going to work, and I didn't know if people were going to turn up. Um, and then when I arrived, uh, half an hour early, uh, everyone was there, laptops open, all sat ready, and I thought, okay, oh God, this is, this is going to work. And there's certainly a few things that you can do to, to relieve the, the pressure of that and the anxiety of doing those kind of community events, and I'll, and I'll come back to that in, in a minute. So I think the key to the success there, and Bruce will go into it in a second, was uh, let's not reinvent the, the wheel. We had seen what works in the Drupal community, and we thought, well, let's apply that, and how do we apply that then to our process? And along the way, we, need, we recognized we needed to be agile, not only with this, but also in the, the development project itself. As I said at the outset, we weren't that experienced with agile when we started, but we quickly learned that we need to adapt our pro processes the way we thought at the start, this is how everything's going to work. And some things did work really well, uh, other things didn't work particularly well. So some of the roles we changed throughout the project, um, we, at the end of our iteration, we always looked at what was not being so good, what do we need to do better next time? And we didn't just write that down, put it in a meeting, but we actually went back a few iterations later and looked at that and said, well, we said back in December we would do this, have we actually done it, is it better now, or do we need to make further changes? And that was kind of what we did with the sprints as well. Uh, and live and breathe the code, and we gave everybody who was participating in the sprints the opportunity uh, to do that. Yeah, and, and as we've talked, I mean, right the way through project management methodology in Agile is this idea about roles and responsibility. And, and we started to, to sort of have a step back and, and have a look at this and see what roles were, were involved. And now they don't really have any formal definition. Um, and some roles are, are sort of moved over sort of gently from our project, project team. And we've certainly used our Agile skills uh, to adapt these as, as we've gone along. But just having a quick look, these are the sort of things that I've identified uh, to, to, to do something like our, like our code sprint for us. And so we have people who uh, are, are act as teachers and testers. We have people who are developers. We have people who are developer mentors. We have people who are documenters. Um, and just going back to that photo we had uh, previously, you know, we've got the tester in the room here. We've got someone who is a developer mentor. We've got our enthusiastic and dependable community members, and I'll come back to this in a second. We have other community developers sitting around. We have people who are taking on multiple roles. Uh, so someone from our support team who's also a developer and he's also one of our community developers. And people that take on tons of roles from their technical expertise through teacher, community builder, to even doing the documentation. So yeah, a, a room full of people taking on responsibility to, to get this sprint working. So we have our processes, we have our roles, but what we really need in order to make this work, the last piece maybe in, in, the, in the puzzle, is the champions. Here we've got Jordan Spieth, Andy Murray, and the Deutsche Nationalmannschaft. Sorry if there's any Austrians here, but I couldn't find a world champion group for Austrians. Uh, but these, these, it was really important to have people, the champions for the service, champions for the code, and also champions for the community. Yeah, and so some of these uh, roles and responsibilities just want to go back and highlight a little. And this was one of the, the, the things that we looked at, uh, our kind of senior stakeholder, sponsor, or, or believer. And this was really someone at a senior level outside of our team who we noticed were being this really visible and vocal support for what we were doing. So our first sprint, pretty scary thing to do, lots of people quite protective, totally understandable. But there were some really good people, yeah, at a senior level that were talking about this at uh, meetings, uh, supporting us when we were trying to recruit people to come along by emailing, uh, mailing lists and forums. And, and just uh, doing that uh, really helped support the whole process. And they also really help drive things along as well because they are the people that are starting to say, when is your next code sprint? You know, I'm out there, I'm hearing support for this. When's your next one? And so it's really helping us drive uh, things along as well. And then one of uh, an incredibly important person is our enthusiastic and dependable community member. And these are people who, when they say they're going to turn up, they do turn up. And, and, and so I will sometimes uh, contact them and, and say, this is the date we're thinking of. Are you still interested in coming along? Um, are you going to be able to make it? Uh, and that kind of releases the tension a bit on the day. It just really helps when you know these people say they're going to turn up, they are going to turn up. 
And when they come along, they engage with everything that we ask them to do. Uh, and sometimes we change things, you know, we don't want to do the same thing at every single code sprint. And here they are, and we say, and, and, and can you try this? And they always say yes, and they, and they plow straight in. And it just makes things so much smoother and, and so much easier. And then at the end of it all, they're there, and they will give us uh, some pretty, um, uh, you know, it, it's gentle, but it's honest uh, and, and constructive feedback and, and criticism. And we can take that again to, to improve our events going into the future. So another couple of roles which are important, at least one of them is very important, is that the, the, the role of the technical expert, the senior developer, the people who, person who owns the code, and our senior developer, Mari, is sitting here in the front. Um, they, Mari, uh, along with other colleagues, provides the technical leadership, uh, the in-depth uh, Drupal expertise, the, the code meister, as it were. And the other role, the one which I fulfill, is, is the bigger picture. Uh, from the program, there are certain activities, uh, project activities running in the program, but there's also activities going on outside the program. Uh, it is good to have someone who has an overview of the dependencies, uh, risks, issues, opportunities, with all the, how does this all hang together? How does it hang together in terms of resourcing, for example? Um, and also reporting in terms of reporting that up to the uh, portfolio level and then on to, on to senior management. And yes, I mean, obviously, here I am totally overthinking it, and now I'm going to say don't overthink it. But I think that's okay uh, when you're doing a presentation like, like this. So, yeah, I mean, we, uh, and I think as well, recognizing these roles is really, really important because it then does allow you to, to, to say thank you properly to the contribution that our people are making. I mean, it's something that Dries mentioned in his keynote when he's saying, you know, we really need to support these contributors better. And, and that's really why we're doing this. A, a lot of the things that people do are in the background. They're taking responsibility on for it and, it, and it really helps things to be seamless. And I think it's good sometimes just to, to, to to be reminded about what people do and be able to, to, to thank them. But obviously, yeah, don't strip out all the spontaneity. Let things grow organically and naturally, otherwise you're gonna uh, kill the community. So what benefits do we get from all this? Um, the community and the community involvement, it can bring natural change. It mixes up the team dynamics. People are working with uh, people that they normally don't work with. Um, it gets people out of their comfort zones, doing things they're, they've not done before. And we found it taps in and recognizes um, uh, untapped skills. So people that are, who've come along to some of the community events who we didn't know had such great Drupal skills and we've been able to get them more involved, which is fantastic. Um, and it refreshes and revitalizes the process overall within the team and the dynamic of the content management system. Um, I, in itself because working with new people that's exciting and it's an opportunity for people to share their experiences and also obviously to to learn from one another um, and another benefit is that you know these are mm. these users are the people that are actually using our, our product and you know you can learn so much from the very community that you're building these products for um, and it's just really nice to see them come along and, 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 and see their involvement um, and enthusiasm for your product. Um, they, you can see that they have a real genuine interest in what you are doing. Um, and we are not building the next iPhone or uh, the, a new sports car or a new generation of tellies. You know, we, we're building a, a good but you know, functional uh, content management system. And, and to see people uh, to almost building a, a relationship with your product is, is really, really nice to see. And it makes all the effort and the work and the fitting this around your day job, uh, it makes it all, all worthwhile and, and, and a really wonderful process to, to see. So we've told you how brilliant this all is, but don't take our word for it. Let's listen to what a few people around the university say. The University of Edinburgh is embracing the use of open source software to help us reach our strategic vision of building strong and vibrant communities within and beyond the university. Our aim is to take the best of what open source can teach us about building communities within the university, but also to ultimately contribute back to these global communities. As the head of IT for the College of Medicine and Veterinary Medicine, I have to manage a very diverse and complex set of business requirements. It's great to see these requirements being met quicker 
and more efficiently by working collaboratively and using the developer community resources around the university. Well, for us, it's been a really, really good experience. We've, we've, got a, we've developed a working relationship with the development teams outside our own college, which is a first for us. Um, and we've, we've designed and developed and delivered some new features that we haven't had before. So for us, it's been a really positive experience. I'm really pleased to have worked on this project. Good afternoon, DrupalCon from Edinburgh. The university website team have actively pursued the benefits of engaging, collaborating, and contributing back to the university Drupal community. We are glad to nurture and view this collaborative environment grow to benefit the university's website provision and have a positive impact to Drupal as well. Have a great DrupalCon. Thanks, Doris. So we heard there from four quite different people. Uh, from the development point of view, somebody who's not been used to working uh, with other colleagues, colleagues outside their own school or college, getting involved in this. We heard from um, somebody from one of the business areas who is able to get features and new requirements quicker into the system. Um, we heard from the service owner who is pleased to see the continuous development of the system. And we've heard from the CIO who is happy that we involved in this activity to build a community within the university and feed that back to the open source community. And as we said, we've always wanted to push things along and, and, and to, to have this continuous in, improvement. And, you know, so we've taken things from, the, like, directly from the, the sort of agile uh, sprint review or retrospective. Uh, and so at the end of some of our events, especially at the end of our, our code sprint, we do really go through all our accomplishments and, and go through the, the, the sort of ceremony uh, of appreciating the, the work that people have done. And then we do open it up, and, and often if we have time, we go right the way around the room, do the whole what went well, what didn't go so well, what can you do better next time. And we do always try and take this on board for our next events. Um, you know, obviously, you're not going to be able to do any, everything, but just small little steps here and there uh, can make a real big difference and, and, and take your community along with you. So being a university, we don't just do that without any governance. A little bit of governance has to be. So we, one of the things we implemented during the main development project was a CAB, a change advisory board, which gives the opportunity for people who take the distribution and develop something uh, which uh, everybody feels can be used, uh, a feature within the main CMS. There's a, a, a process for change. People can raise an RFC. It goes through the change advisory board uh, and then can flow into the, into the, the, the CMS. This is an ITIL based process. Um, we, as Bruce said, we adapt to community events. We, uh, in terms, we adapt to processes for community events. Sorry, that the uh, we don't go overboard on the uh, on the change process for that. We get the change manager involved in the uh, before the code sprint so that they know which changes are uh, which issues are being worked um, on. So that a few request for change usually uh, isn't required. And probably another one of the very important ones, and I think this applies to all project management. Use a little bit of common sense. You'll go a long way with it. Yeah, and, and the governance is actually really, really important. And, and you'll see this kind of spread around something like DrupalCon. It is done very, very subtly, um, but it is there and it's done very well. And, and, and I think that's the important thing because you, you need this governance in place, but you don't want to kill that contribution. And what you certainly don't want to do is take so much control that it stops your community taking responsibility for certain things because they are a fantastic resource. Uh, you know, intelligent, creative, innovative, and you want to tap into that. Uh, and you want them to take responsibility because it just helps you get more and more things done. So, yeah, absolutely perfect. Governance important, uh, but just don't overdo it. And to finish up. So, the conclusions. We're saying refresh your team by stepping off your treadmill. Yes, and don't leave uh, your project management methodologies behind. As we've said, tons and tons of skills. Let's not separate that. Work out uh, with your community events. Take what you've learned and apply it as well. Continuously improve. When you find things that haven't work, aren't working so well, make slight and small changes in order to improve things. Yes, and obviously look to existing communities. Great one here. If you've not looked around uh, and looked at Drupal in this way before, come in tomorrow and just look around and see that structure in place and, and what there is and, and all the sort of volunteers and everything. And you, you can learn so much from a, a community like this. 
And just to summarize all that, take the best bits, use them creatively, and continuously improve and make changes and um, use that to the best you can. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions? If I could ask you to go to the microphone so that it's captured for the recording. And yeah, it doesn't have to be questions. It could be some experience that you have had, communities that you've been building, uh, especially if it's from a more commercial slant, we, we would love to hear that. Or people have tried things and, it's, and it maybe has not worked. Or yeah, you might feel that this is not something you would be able to do uh, in your commercial setting. Be very interesting. To to hear that. Oh dear. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions if you don't have to go to the microphone? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't be intimidated by the microphone. Yeah, so, I mean, we have quite... I, I suppose, in some ways, the university is, is a unique setup in, in some ways. But in, in some ways, it just mirrors another, you know, a wider community of users uh, anyway. But, yeah, I mean, our team... Uh, you know, I'm, I'm talking about our wider team. We, we all cross-functional. We, we come from different teams within, within the organisation. But at the team that work on this project, yeah, we, we as a team... Uh, work to, to create these events. So, you know, as, as we took on some different roles and there would be someone who was a sort of, or a team of people, uh, a subset of, of the bigger team who were this kind of community builder. And it really is just getting an idea like the Code Sprint and just saying, like, how are we going to do this? And it was just about saying, uh, you know, getting permission to do this and then going out, you know, and, and just doing all the logistics, like booking a room and just starting to advertise it and going out and talking to people directly and saying, like, are you interested? The, these are developers who are in our, our university community, but these, you know, we have a huge uh, number of staff and, and we have a huge devolved university. So this is not like a tiny little campus. This is people, like, all over the place. And so we don't know them personally. It's just, you know, we're having to go out and maybe speak to, like, the head of IT who was there and say, do you know anyone? Um, is, can you recommend anyone who would like to come along? Is this something you would be interested in? So we sold it as a, as a concept. Um, and then from there, as soon as people come to that first event, then, then you're on a winner because they're going to go out and, and spread the word for you. Yeah. I mean, I'd say for this, maybe it's like the code sprint or something like that is, is pretty unique and it works for us. Um, but yeah, it's maybe not going to translate to it to, to everybody else. But, but what you could do is go through that same creative process of, of, of just sort of widening out your horizons and looking at, say, a community like Drupal and just saying, like, how can we use some of what is going on here? So you're not saying you, you, you would necessarily replicate this model. This is something that worked for us. Um, and, yeah, I, I can see in a, in a commercial setting it, it's probably much more closed um, and you wouldn't want people coming in. But, yeah, I mean, I think that there are other things that you could do. And, um, you know, we were open to anything, really, from the community. So I wouldn't say you have to go this way. But, yeah, just use the, the community for, for, for other ideas, yeah. 
just to add on, I think we were quite lucky in our situation of having a, a, a larger community of people with a Drupal knowledge all across the university who we didn't necessarily or we didn't work with uh, closely, but they all work under the umbrella of the university, therefore they were there and as a, kind of almost an untapped resource that we could we could tap into in a small with a small team in a commercial setting. I see that being a bigger challenge. One possibility would be to engage a little bit differently with your customer, but that again brings its own challenges because you want to keep the customer uh, vendor relationship. That needs to be quite clear for obvious reasons. So I think we were quite lucky. Um, the University of Edinburgh is a very devolved uh, organisation. There is central CMS, the, obviously this one we'll be talking about today, but it's not the only one. Every school or college has the right, if you like, to go away and do something on their own, and a lot of them do it. Um, part of the uh, motivations behind the distribution was so that we could put what we have developed out there and if somebody wants to take it away and do something wonderfully horrible with it it's up to them they can go and do that but there is an avenue through the change advisory process to come back in or to come into the central cms um, and but schools and colleges do have the freedom to uh, take up uh, other, other systems not only with end with a web presence with everything. The look and feel, yeah. have a global experience language which we've created over the last few years so that any uh, anybody who's creating anything public facing or in student internal facing uh, can use this global experience language so the look and feel of the user experience should be the same across all platforms it isn't always exactly 100 percent but the the take up of uh, the the gel which we call ed gel has been very good especially over the last year and we're advancing that now putting more work into developing that further so the idea then is that if somebody wants to go away and do something else then they can take edgel across whatever platform uh, and apply that to the application uh, or the content that they are creating with the goal that the user the should be a student staff or a visitor has the same experience across it should be for the user irrelevant where they are they they should be able to jump from one system there and it still has the same look and feel same ie not always the case, but it's a work in progress. Um, I think we were, again, we were quite lucky in that the university website programme had been around for four or five years before we actually started the Drupal project. And they had been working and invested a lot of time and effort in building that community so that we, we tapped into it and we were able to 
pick up on that work and it helped in lots of areas, not only with the, uh, the, uh, the development but also with the user stories, with getting the feedback, with being able to get the message out there. Um, it certainly made us project manager for the development project, made the comms very, very easy uh, during the project to keep it. This was a two year development and people had been waiting on a new CMS for a long time. So they were keen to uh, have regular updates. And it was fantastic just to tap into that channel, use the different communities we have to get the message out there. Um, that one didn't really answer your question though. I guess from starting from scratch, there is a lot of work that has to be um, put into that in order to build this community up. But if you don't start with the first step, you don't make it anywhere on your journey, I guess. Um, and the other thing not to underestimate is the amount of effort which goes into even when you have the community and that itself, building that is a lot of work. Um, but building the code sprints and all the things that you have to put in place, things that uh, Bruce was more involved in uh, the code sprints than I was, Bruce and Mary, but uh, the work which has to be put into that uh, is, is quite significant. And it has to fit in with everything else. It has to fit in with the other projects, it has to fit, it, fit in with the service work, uh, which is going on, as well as the day-to-day -day, uh, business as usual. But I'm told it gets easier. You've, you've never said that to me before. <laughs> I think you have to be aware of the effort you need to invest at the outset, but it's well, well worth it. Any other questions? Going, going, going. Yes, feedback. <laughs> I, um, I don't know the node number, but if you could please go onto the DrupalCon website and give us feedback from the session, that would be much appreciated. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> we can start a drink now.